This presentation gives the viewer a comparison of Conservation Desktop version 2.3 and Customer Service Toolkit. This version of Conservation Desktop replaces all the functionality of Toolkit. The objective is to give the users of Customer Service Toolkit an introduction to the location of various tools in Conservation Desktop that are used in Toolkit. First, let's look at the Conservation Desktop user interface. This is the view the users will see once they have opened a case file in Conservation Desktop. On the left side is the table of contents. At times, the table of contents will be collapsed, but the user can expand the table of contents by clicking on the Expand Collapse bar. At times, the user may wish to collapse the table of contents to make more room for the map. In this example, the Client Panel, Case File Panel, Practice Schedule Panel, and Agreement Panel are present. In Conservation Desktop, only one panel will be open at a time. The user can expand a panel by clicking the panel title. At the top of the Table of Contents is the Client Panel with various functions to deal with client information. The client is comparable to the customer in Toolkit. Below the Client panel is the Case File panel. This panel compares to the Customer file in Toolkit. Note the various functions available for managing the Case file. Below the Case File panel is the Practice Schedule panel. This panel corresponds to the Plan or Cons plan in Toolkit. There are several available functions for managing the Practice Schedule. Below the practice schedule is the agreement panel. This panel will be available if the client has an agreement and the agreement is opened. Note the various functions available for managing the agreement. At the bottom of the Conservation Desktop window are the tables for the various data from MPAD. The user can expand the tables by clicking the Show Tables button. In addition to the table of contents, the user interface has a map view and a table view. The map view includes a new center toolbar with various functions. The center toolbar is always visible. From the center toolbar, the user can open the map contents window. Note the different layers available to display on the map. The map contents window is similar to the ArcMap table of contents. On the right side of the map view is the map toolbar. There are three separate toolbars available on the map toolbar. The first toolbar is the map tools toolbar. This toolbar contains tools for various map functions such as selecting the base layer, setting map preferences, setting bookmarks, and finding features on the map. The second toolbar available from the Map Toolbar is the Draw Tools Toolbar. This toolbar has various tools for drawing graphics on the map. Graphics drawn with these tools are temporary and will not be saved when CD is closed. There are also tools to calculate the area or length of selected graphics. The third toolbar available from the Map Toolbar is the Map Label Tools Toolbar. There are tools for creating map labels from layer features, as well as tools for creating annotation labels. Labels created with these tools are saved in the case file and will remain after the case file is closed. Now let's compare the parts of Conservation Desktop with familiar parts of Toolkit. The Table of Contents does not compare to the Table of Contents in ArcMap but more closely compares to the tabs in Customer Service Toolkit. The General tab in Toolkit compares to the first two panels in Conservation Desktop, the Client and the Case File. Note that Customer or Client information is managed under the Case File panel in Conservation Desktop. Clients associated with the Case File can be added or removed, and the decision maker for the Case File can be changed. To manage assistance notes in Conservation Desktop, the user would use the Notes tool on the main Conservation Desktop menu and not the Assistance Note tab as done in Toolkit. 
Assistance notes can be added or edited, and assistance notes reports can be generated. Since the customer files are stored on local servers and not MPAD, Conservation Desktop makes those available through the Legacy Files function under the Case File panel. The Practice Schedule is available as a table in CD instead of a tab in Toolkit. Note the Practice Schedule name matches the plan name in Toolkit and practice information is stored in the Practice Schedule table. In Conservation Desktop, the Create Edit Practices function under the Practice Schedule panel replaces the Schedule Full Extent Practices button in Toolkit. The Plan Wizard in Toolkit is replaced by the Conservation Products function in Conservation Desktop under the Case File panel. In Conservation Desktop, the Create Edit Agreements Items function under the Practice Schedule panel replaces the Contract Wizard button in Toolkit. The Practice Schedule Approval function under the Practice Schedule panel replaces the Plan Approval button in Toolkit. The Document Management button on the main Conservation Desktop toolbar replaces the Upload Document button in Toolkit. Now let's compare the Toolkit ArcMap window to Conservation Desktop. The Table of Contents in ArcMap does not compare to the Table of Contents in Conservation Desktop, but the Map Content panel in Conservation Desktop. In CD, the Center Tools toolbar includes several tools, including the Zoom to Previous and Zoom to Next button, the Select Features, Zoom to Selected, and Clear Selection tools. The Map Tools toolbar has the Identify button, the Measure Tools, the Find Tool, and the Bookmarks. The Draw Tools are on the Draw Tools toolbar. Now let's look at the various Toolkit tools and their location in Conservation Desktop. The Zoom to Plan tool is replaced by the Home button on the Center toolbar. The Toolkit Plan tool has various functions. Once it is clicked, the various functions are available on the Create Manage Plans dialog. The Selecting Existing Plan option is replaced by the Open Practice Schedule function under the Case File panel in Desktop. The Create New Plan option is replaced by the Create New Practice Schedule function under the Case File panel in Desktop. The Add Remove Land Units option is replaced by the Add Remove Land Units function under the Practice Schedule panel in Desktop. And the Edit Plan Decision Maker option is replaced by the Manage Client Associations under the Practice Schedule panel in Desktop. The Toolkit Feature Summary button is replaced by the Measure tool on the Maps Tools toolbar in Desktop. The Map Label tool in Toolkit is replaced by the Map Label Tools toolbar in Desktop. The Buffer tool in Toolkit appears on the Draw Tools toolbar in Desktop. The Attribute tool, New Toolkit Layer tool, and the Toolkit Digitizer tools are used to create, edit, and attribute land units, practices, and other layers in Toolkit. In CD, Creating, attributing, and editing plan land units is done by using the Create Edit PLUs function under the Case File panel. In Desktop, one tool is used for creating, editing, and attributing land units. In Toolkit, two tools are used. There are other time saving features, such as in CD, the tract and land unit number will be defaulted to the CLU information if the PLUs are imported from the CLU layer. Multiple PLUs can be edited at once, data can be saved once after all has been entered, and PLUs automatically check in. In Toolkit, each tract and land unit number has to be entered even if the PLUs are imported from the CLU layer. PLUs must be edited one at a time, each PLU must be saved one at a time, and PLUs must be checked into NPAD. In CD, creating, attributing, and edited practices is done by using the Create Edit Practices function under the Practice Schedule panel. 
In desktop, one tool is used for creating, editing, and attributing practices. In toolkit, two tools are used for each practice type for a total of six tools. Generally, the flow of creating practices is improved in Conservation Desktop because one tool is used for creating and attributing practices, and the month, year, and program are retained for additional practices in the edit session. Also, all practices can be entered before saving, which saves additional time. The Toolkit Change View button appears on the Map Tools toolbar in Desktop. The Quick Report tool in Toolkit is the Land Unit Report tool on the Map Tools toolbar in Desktop. The Transfer tool in Toolkit is the Transfer tool function under the Case File panel in Desktop. The Toolkit Filter tool is on the Center toolbar in Desktop. The Map Products tool is now the Conservation Products function under the Case File panel in Conservation Desktop. The Soils Map and Inventory button is now the Soil Map and Inventory function under the Case File panel in Conservation Desktop. The Export Features button is available by selecting features in a layer in Map Contents, then right-clicking to export the selected features. The tools identified in this image are no longer needed in Conservation Desktop. Since Desktop is online and creating an area of interest and checking in and out land units will no longer be needed. Also, since 2002 CSP is nearing the end of the program, the CSP button will no longer be needed. Hopefully, this introduction has helped you to understand the location of tools you usually use in Toolkit in Conservation Desktop.